In July of this year, my husband and I celebrated our ninth wedding anniversary. I can't actually believe it's been so long, but then when I look back on old pictures, I quickly realise that it's definitely been nine years because we've definitely changed a lot. But with that being said, over these last nine years, we've definitely learned a lot about money and made so many mistakes along the way too. And I've just really been taking time to reflect over those nine years and mistakes that we've made and lessons that we've learned. So on our anniversary day, I actually did a post on my Instagram, insert clip here, and I did a post sharing those nine lessons that I've learned in my first nine years of marriage and the post got so much engagement so much feedback and so many comments so I guess it's a topic that people are really interested in so I thought why not do a video actually expanding on those points and really going into detail explaining those nine lessons that I've learned in my first nine years of marriage what I really want to do is actually do a follow-up to this video to get my husband on the channel and actually share things that he's learned in the first nine years of our marriage too so if you want to see a part two of this video then please get this video to a hundred likes and then I'll see if I can convince him to come on and do a part two with me where we can kind of both discuss things that we've learned over these nine years of marriage so yeah with that being said guys in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you nine things that I've learned about money in my first nine years of marriage and yeah hope you find it interesting and I hope you take something away from this video if you like this kind of content you're interested in money and marriage and finances then definitely give this video a thumbs up subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet done so and without further ado I'm going to get into those nine lessons that I've learned in my first nine years of marriage The first and the biggest lesson that I can say I've learned in these nine years is to avoid consumer debt at all costs. And when I say avoid at all costs, I mean run. Debt is here, run that way. <laughs> Literally avoid it at all costs because that is one thing that definitely got us into a lot of trouble in our marriage was when we started taking on unnecessary consumer debt and that got us into a lot of debt. As you know my story, if you've seen it already, I'll insert a video up there where I share the story of how we ended up in 36,000 pounds worth of debt. And a big part of that was because we took on so much consumer debt. So I'll definitely say in marriage, avoid consumer debt at all costs. I know there's the argument that goes around people saying there's good debt versus bad debt. I'm of the persuasion that debt is not a good thing. And if you view debt like that, you're more likely to be cautious when you approach situations where you're getting yourself into debt. When you start telling yourself that debt is good, debt is good, that's when you end up getting yourself into a lot of financial trouble because you over leverage yourself and then you end up finding out that that good debt turns into bad debt very quickly. I do get the fact that you know you can use debt for leverage and all the rest of it, but be smart with it, be wise with it, and don't take on debt for unnecessary consumer purchases because it's not worth it. Take it from somebody that's been there, done that, and bought the t-shirt, it is not worth it. Avoid consumer debt at all costs. Another big lesson that I've definitely learned, and I'm so glad that I actually learned that quite early on in marriage, is to not keep secrets about money. Don't do it. Like if your team and your partnership, then don't keep secrets when it comes to money. I read a statistic that stated that over 42% of marriages in the UK end in divorce. That's huge. I knew it was big, but I didn't realize how big it actually was. 42% of those marriages end in divorce and a huge percentage of those are because of money problems. Money can lead to a lot of conflict in marriage. Listen, I'm by no means a relationship coach or any kind of relationship expert, but talking from my little experience that I have, I can definitely say that open lines of communication are essential and you definitely shouldn't keep secrets when it comes to money. Especially in marriage, you've decided that this is the person that I'm going to spend the rest of my life with. So if that is the case, you should be able to trust them with any secret that you have or any anything when it comes to your finances, the good, the bad and the ugly, that person should have your back and that person should be willing to work through whatever that issue or that financial thing that you're dealing with is. They should be able to have your back and support you through it. So even before we walked down the aisle, even before we said I do, we already had so many conversations about our finances to see where we both were. So I knew that my husband had a little bit of debt in terms of his overdraft and student loan and I also had my student loan. But other than that, we didn't have any debts between us. So that was a good foundation for us to start our marriage and start a relationship with but no matter what the situation was we would have been transparent with it anyway from the beginning so that we know what we're working with and how we're going to work through it together another lesson that i learned is that you can actually celebrate a special occasion without breaking the bank you don't have to spend a fortune to prove and show your loved one that you love them you can get very creative when it comes to gift giving by all means if you can afford to spend the fortune on those gifts then be my guest spend 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 away but if it's not within your means and you can't afford to do it don't feel the pressure to do it just to keep up with what social media says that you should do as a couple i'm a firm believer that where there's a will there's a frugal way i say it all the time and that's because i truly mean it and i truly 
truly believe that that is so. So where there's a will, you can find a frugal way to do things. So you can get creative when it comes to gift giving. The best gift that I've ever received from my husband was a gift that wasn't actually expensive at all. He painted me a picture of the two of us, insert picture here, and that was the best gift ever because I know a lot of thought went into it, a lot of hard work and time and love went into creating that masterpiece. So it doesn't have to be expensive. You don't have to break the bank to celebrate special occasions. It's so important to have regular talks about money when you're married. This is something that we only really started doing during the last five years of our marriage, which I'd say was not a good thing on our part because I think it's so important to have regular conversations and lines of communication about money because you need to be on the same page and know where you're going. During our first few years of marriage, I can honestly say our money conversations were all about, you know, can you transfer me money to do X or have you paid for X bill? Or can you buy X for me? Like that's literally what our conversations were about. It was just about, you know, money transactions, but not really having real deep conversations about money. And when I say deep conversations about money, the kind of conversations I think that it is important for couples to be having are conversations like, what are our financial goals? Where do we see ourselves in five years time financially? What investments should we be making as a couple? How are we going to build a legacy in the future for our family and for our future children? These are the kind of deep conversations that I think couples should be having on a regular basis. If you can't have these conversations with your spouse, then who are you actually going to have these conversations with? Because I know for a lot of us, we don't talk to our family about it. We don't talk to our friends about money. So who are we going to talk to about money if not our spouse? I think it's so important for the two of you to really have those conversations together, have those real honest conversations so that you can see if you're on the same page and see if you're working towards the same goal. Your views on money can be very different to your spouse. So no matter what your differences and opinions are, you need to come together and agree on one approach. I think it's so important for you to compromise and come to a unanimous decision between the two of you when it comes to how you're gonna manage your finances as a household. So with my husband, he's the kind of person that he can have the one pair of trainers and he will wear those trainers until the rubber wears fit and the shoes are talking. He doesn't care, he, he's fine. So long as he's got shoes to get from A to B, that's all he's really concerned about. He doesn't need to have so many pairs. Me, on the other hand, I could have 10 pairs of shoes in black, but different styles and different designs. And in my head, I need all of them because they all serve different purposes and they go with different outfits and they can be used for different occasions. That's like how my view of money has always been. So we've had very different views when it comes to money and different spending behaviors and different spending patterns. But it was important for us and it was necessary for us to actually survive as a couple to come together and agree on an approach to spend our money and how we were going to manage our finances as a household moving forward. And I think it's so important to set those foundations early on so that later on down the line, when you start having children and all the rest of it, you can be agreed in the way you're going to teach them about money and teach them how to manage their finances too. We established very early on in our relationship that we were polar opposites when it came to money and how we handled it and how we managed finances. And that's fine because they do say opposites attract, but it's just a case of how we're going to find a way to work together as a team. Because the goal isn't for me to turn him into me and vice versa, the goal is for us to find a way to work together. This is where the beauty of a budget comes in. And I tell you, since we started the zero-based budget in Method and we've combined that income to the point that we know where every single penny and pound is going, we've been able to manage our finances so effectively and we've really been on the same page as well when it comes to managing our finances. The beauty of the zero-based budget is you give every penny and pound an assignment to do so that you're not left at the end of the month wondering where all the money went. And with that being said, with the zero-based budget, what we do is we allocate ourselves fun money each. So my fun money is mine to do as I please and vice versa. Even if I want to buy 100 pairs of shoes in black, I'm free to do that. I have the liberty to do that and he's not going to complain. He may side eye me and be looking at me like I'm mad, but he's not going to say anything about it because it's within the budget and it's money that I plan to spend in that way. I think it's so important to get a budget that you do together and both of you respect it and stick to the budget. So this point I think is so important and so critical for all married couples to take note of and anybody really, even if you're not married and you're preparing to get into marriage or just a single person managing your finances, it's so, 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 so important to set yourself short, medium and long-term financial goals. Because if you don't know where you're going, how are you gonna know when you actually arrive at your destination? There needs to be a plan and there needs to be something that you're working towards. That is something that we only started doing in the last few years. And I know that if we had started doing this from the onset when we first got married, by now we'd be in such a stronger financial position. But the first few years, we didn't really have a plan. We were kind of just living, living in the moment and 
and living our best lives and there was no actual financial plan. And I think it's so important to set yourself these goals so that you know the direction in which you're going and then that way you will know when you've arrived at your destination. All money that comes into the household belongs to both of you. When you get married and you've made that vow and you said for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer and all the rest of the vows that you said, you've made that commitment to become one. So when the two of you have become one, that should definitely apply when it comes to your finances. It's not my money or your money, it's our money. And that's how all money that comes into the household should be viewed when you're in marriage. That is a piece of advice that I received quite early on into marriage. In fact, that was advice that we received before we got married and it's advice that we took into our marriage and that's the approach that we had when it came to finances any money that came into our hands belonged to the both of us we made plans for that money together as a couple so in our early years of being married I was the breadwinner in terms of I earned more than my husband fast forward now he earns a lot more than I was earning back then or than I earn now but it never ever mattered because we always viewed it as our money anyway so wherever he's short I've got him and vice versa and we just saw it as a team effort so all the money was ours to use as we needed to do so there was no ego involved there was no you know I have more money than you and I I make more money than you so you need to listen to there was none of that because we always saw it as level playing field all the money is for the team anyway so if i'm winning you're winning vice versa if you're winning i'm winning and then on the other spectrum if you're losing i'm losing and if i'm losing you're losing too so it's like it's a team at the end of the day we are one so it doesn't really matter we shouldn't ever view the money as mine or yours or ever feel a way about you know asking your spouse for money or vice versa because it's our money at the end of the day. Both so. of you need to respect the budget. Once you've created that budget and you've said, this is our budget for our household, both parties need to respect the budget. So I can't stress enough the importance of one, having a written budget, and number two, actually sticking to that budget. I know I myself struggle to stick to my budget, but I am trying, I'm a work in progress. And every day and every month, should I say, I get better at sticking to the budget. If you had asked me in my first few years of marriage, if we budgeted, we would have said, yeah, we budget. We've always budgeted in our heads so yeah we have a budget we know roughly how much is going out how much is going in and where all our money needs to go so yeah we have a budget but it was only the last few years that I realized oh, what we were doing in the first few years was wasting so much money because we never actually had a clear cut plan for our money so if there's anything that I really want anyone watching to take away from this video is the importance of having a budget having a written budget and a written plan for your money as a couple and sticking and committing to that plan in which you've both set do you know how much you spend on electricity every single single month? Do you know how much you spend on groceries every single month? Do you know how much you spend on lunch? Do you know how much you spend on your car? Do you know how much you spend on petrol? All of these different expenses, as a couple, we should both know how much we're spending on all these different categories. That way we can actually manage the money effectively and know where all the money is going. Because by not doing this and not having a clear cut plan for your money, you're leaving so much money on the table and you're going to lose so much money without even realising it. So as I've mentioned before, it's one thing having a plan for the money, but it's another thing actually stick into that plan and staying committed to the plan in which you set yourself obviously I've failed many times at this myself but I'm definitely a work in progress and I'm definitely making a conscious effort to stick to my budget categories and my spending categories one thing I don't do is overspend in terms of my fund monies so in that respect I'm doing well I respect the budget enough not to take the mick and start spending money frivolously on things that I just want to spend money on the only area in fact that I would say I'm very weak in is my grocery budget and really sticking to that but that is a work in progress that is something that I work every month to keep on top of and try and really stick to. Okay, so the final lesson that I want to share with you guys, and I don't want to sound like a broken record and I don't want to keep repeating myself, but it is such an important lesson and it's one that really, really affected us the most, I'd say, financially in our marriage. And it was the keeping up with the Joneses. It was trying to keep up with people and please people, please everybody but ourselves and our bank balance. And that's something that we made a mistake of doing so much early on in marriage going on holidays all the time when people invited us or going out to eat all the time just going everywhere and being so available and doing everything that we've been invited to do that cost us a lot of money in marriage and I think it's so important as a married couple to really prioritize your home and prioritize your own finances yes it's okay to go out with your friends and enjoy and indulge a little bit but it's not okay for you to prioritize those things over your household and over your own financial goals and plans for the future your people are your people at the end of the day your friends your family they should understand that you are working towards a certain financial goal which is why you may not be at their beck and call and be able to go to every single event that they invite you to and if they can't accept that well then that's life sorry at the end of the day you can't please all the people all the time these are just nine of the lessons that I learned in my first nine years of marriage when I tell you there's so many more money 
lessons that I could talk about. There are so many. Give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet done so. Share this video with a friend, a family member, somebody that you know that's about to get married or somebody that's only been married a short amount of time. Share this video far and wide and I will see you guys on my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Take care guys. Bye.